We're going to talk about treatment for the patients who have lumbar stenosis and neurogenic claudication. Initially, the treatment for these patients starts with uh, a similar method as treatment for patients with radiculopathy. So we start with using over-the-counter pain medications such as uh, anti-inflammatories or acetaminophen. We can use muscle relaxants. Sometimes we use a short course of steroids. Um, I do recommend my patients to start physical therapy as well. And typically a flexion-based regime where they're kind of bending forward as they're doing exercises can help in patients uh, with spinal stenosis. Uh, uh, Water-based exercises can help these patients as well to control their symptoms. Uh, and in some cases, epidural injections are used to try to help their symptoms. So this is really the non-operative part of the treatment for spinal stenosis. Uh, patients who are not improving and it's been more than six weeks or longer, and they still continue to have a lot of symptoms, uh, that's when we start to talk about surgical treatment. Uh, other times to consider surgical treatment uh, are going to be in patients who have weakness, patients who have difficulty controlling their bowel or bladder, so those patients who have Cotaquina syndrome. Um, you know, timing of surgery, again, depends on the symptoms. If it's really pain, uh, it is more elective. Typically, we wait at least six weeks or longer for those patients to make sure that we give them a fair chance at non-operative treatment before we talk about surgery. However, patients who have a lot of weakness, those are typically considered as a more you know, urgent surgery. And especially for patients who have difficulty controlling their bowel or bladder uh, or who have caught equina, those are best treated within 48 hours of onset of symptoms. So it really depends on the symptoms. For the most part, surgery for spinal stenosis is elective uh, and we do it you know, after many weeks of symptoms. Um, the main form of surgical treatment for patients who have spinal stenosis is uh, decompression. Now decompression, there are different ways of doing it. Uh, here I'm gonna show in this picture what that means. Uh, this one, the first one is actually a normal spine uh, without, without any decompression. The second picture here, this shows a laminotomy. So what happens is that we basically enlarge the spinal canal in this window, remove part of the bone, part of the ligament, part of the tissues, so that there is more space for the spinal nerves. This is called the laminotomy, and you can uh, see in this third picture here that we try to uh, preserve bone as much as we can and try to undercut things using different tools, uh, but try to preserve bone as much as we can uh, to accomplish this laminotomy. In some cases, especially in patients with congenital stenosis, now that's where we end up doing a full laminectomy. A full laminectomy is shown in this diagram here. Uh, that's when we remove the whole lamina, the entire lamina, and essentially do the full decompression uh, to take care of the stenosis. This is typically done in patients who do not have any instability or deformity. For patients who have spondylolisthesis, uh, especially a more mobile spondylolisthesis, or patients who have scoliosis or deformity, and they have stenosis in addition to that, you know, that's when we typically will think about doing a fusion as well, in addition to the decompression. So this is what is shown here that a patient, uh, he had or she had a decompression, and in addition to that, we put these screws and rods to add the fusion to this. Uh, and we know from the sports study that uh, the outcome of these patients, once they are symptomatic, for patients who are symptomatic because of spinal stenosis and claudication, those who have surgery have better outcome uh, in terms of pain, function, and satisfaction compared to those who do not have surgery.